All right, so that's all of my categories. Let's take a look at that final score. Hmm. Hey, Nish here, and today we've got a showdown between the two biggest e-reader companies. We've got the Kobo Libra H2O and the Amazon Kindle Paperwhite 4. Today I'm going to go through all the points I think are important on e-readers and double out points as we go along. We start our comparison with a side-by-side -side view, and as you can see, the biggest difference between these devices is the screen size, 7 inch on the Kobo Libre H2O and 6 inches on the Amazon Paperwhite 4. Leaving the screen for a little bit later though, let's focus on the ergonomics and the physical appearance and things. They're both pretty slim devices, as you can see. The main difference, of course, is the Kobo has this wedge-shaped design, this ergonomic asymmetric design, and that makes it a lot more comfortable to hold in comparison to the Kindle. So. That's the auto rotate having some fun there. The ergonomics here are just much, much more superior, and so that's going to be first blood to the Kobo. In terms of materials, both are made of a black, soft touch plastic. You've got a bit more texture on the Kobo, but that doesn't really help the grip all too much. An interesting thing is that these two devices weigh a very similar amount. The Kobo weighs maybe five or ten more grams. So this makes the Kindle feel a little bit more weightier in comparison to its size, which kind of makes it feel premium, but that doesn't really matter, does it? The Hawkeye amongst you will have noticed the physical page turn buttons on the Kobo. I'll talk more on them later. As far as the other specs go, both of these are IPX8 rated. Both of them have a really good battery life owing to their e-ink screens, and both of them charge by micro USB. So the screen is, of course, a really important feature on both of these devices, if, if not the main feature. Both of them feature 300 ppi e-ink screens, meaning the packing of the pixels is the same for both devices. The difference, of course, is you've got a 7-inch screen on the Kobo and a 6-inch on the Kindle. At first glance, this doesn't seem like a big difference, but actually the Kobo has 40% more pixels and area and screen real estate. I think this makes a huge difference if you're looking at books that have images or figures, or maybe your eyesight's bad and you need the text to be big. My personal experience switching to the Kobo, I really couldn't see myself going back to the smaller screen on the Kindle. It's just much better for even for general reading. As they both use the same e-ink technology, there's not a lot to tell them apart when the lights are off, but that does change when you turn the lights on. Now, of course, both feature lights to help improve the contrast. However, the Kobo has 17 LEDs across orange and white. Those orange LEDs allow the screen to tint orange as the day goes on. And this is said to be better if you're reading before bed, for example, because there's less blue light stimulating your brain to be awake. I personally use that and I, I find it quite useful. And for me, that's a default point going to the Kobo because the Kindle does not have this feature. As for the white LEDs, I can do a like for like comparison and they're both pretty good. They both get pretty bright. And that's despite the fact that the Kindle only has five LEDs compared to the say eight or nine white LEDs on the Kobo. I think the thing helping the Kindle is the fact that it's got that flush screen. The extra panel in front of the text allows that light to be dispersed a lot better, and this results in a slightly better contrast. One thing to note is I have read that the Libra H2O can be a bit of a lottery in terms of the uniformity of that light. My model seems to be fine. It's not perfect, but it's nothing that I would complain about. So it's one of those things, again, with the dispersion being better on the Kindle. But honestly, I think if your Kobo arrived with that bad a screen, I'm sure you could return it and get something else. I'm now going to tackle the user experience on both devices on a few different fronts. Firstly, there's software, and the software experience on both of these devices is good. The menus are logical, navigating the home screen is fine. My only teeny gripe is on the Kobo, you can only see six books at once, despite that 40% bigger screen I was raving on about. As expected, you have the Kindle and Kobo stores respectively on each device, and I think these are really evenly matched as far as normal books go. I think you're not going to find something on one that you wouldn't find on the other, to be honest. The only difference, I guess, is that the Kindle store, you'll get some benefits if you're a Prime customer, whereas the Kobo store is very much a standalone thing. As for audiobooks, the Kindle's going to take a point here. It has Bluetooth and supports audiobooks on the device, whereas the Kobo does not have any of these features. The devices take different formats for the ebooks. The Kobo uses the universal EPUB standard, while the Kindle uses a proprietary .mobi. It is quite easy to come across converters online, though, so I don't think this distinction matters too much. In terms of bonus features, on the Kindle, you've got Goodreads integration, if you're really into using Goodreads, whereas the Kobo doesn't have that. Both of them have Overdrive, which you can use to get virtual ebooks and borrow them from your library, and also web browsers. 
One thing I really like on the Kobo though is they included some games under beta features. So you've got like Sudoku, uh, Solitaire, a word scrambling game. These are really great. I think particularly Sudoku works really well on an e-ink screen. So obviously the Kindle doesn't have anything like this and yeah, you could probably get it if you hacked it and jailbroke it, but I don't think that's a, you know, a valid point when you're comparing two items like this. Performance wise, both devices are very similar in terms of flicking through pages. However, there is a big difference when you're resuming a book that you've been reading. On the Kobo, the resuming is instant. It goes straight back into the book. Whereas on the Kindle, you've got first, you've got to press the button and then you've got to swipe. So it's a lot slower overall. And for that, I give the Kobo a little half point. In terms of opening books, say from the homepage, the Kindle can actually be quicker, but I think it's quite important to have a quick resume because the vast majority of the time, you're just gonna be picking up the e-reader, resuming and putting it away. When you're reading your books, you're obviously gonna want some customizability in terms of the text sizes, fonts, and the margins. I think both of these devices do a really good job at giving you options. The Kobo does have much more granular options and it also has the ability to change text boldness. But for me, this, eh, it's useful, but for me, it isn't a game changer or a deal breaker that the Kindle has less. I never had any problems with that, but it is a nice feature if you want it. It's fairly easy to get into the text menus in both cases. There are a couple small wins on either side though. On the Kindle, I like that you can pinch to zoom on the text to make it bigger and smaller very quickly. However, on the Kobo, I really like that you can slide up the left side of the page to change the intensity of the backlight. This is important because both of these devices have a manual backlight. It doesn't automatically respond to your surroundings. And if you're going to be moving around in different environments, it's useful to be able to change that light quickly to a level that's suitable. The Kobo also wins for those physical page buttons. Imagine how much time you can save not having to move your thumb over to change the page. I mean, literally seconds. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm joking, of course, but actually, it, no, it is great. I really like physical page buttons because it's just a lot easier to use. There's no faff. They're nice and tactile and they'll always work. With the Kindle, even though I had it for two years, sometimes I'd go backwards instead of forwards when I touched it and I, I still don't know why that is the case. On the touch front as well, the Kobo lets you quite clearly see where the zones are for going back and forth and looking at options. And you can also change these zones to suit you if, if something would work better. So on that front, again, that's another half point to the Kobo. Both e-readers have functions for highlighting, bookmarking, and notes, and they both work really well in similar kind of performance. I do have a couple gripes with the Kobo though. Firstly, the dictionary, the amount of space on the page it takes up means that it's, it's quite cramped and I feel like they could have just used more space for that dictionary. The other issue is the font size in the dictionary. It tends to stay quite small and it doesn't respond to any changes you make in the text settings. The bigger issue for me has been footnotes. So these are when you're clicking on the text and it brings up a little note, which is at the back of the chapter. On the Kobo, these footnotes appear very small and they don't match your system text settings. So they're pretty hard to read. And if you're reading a book with a lot of footnotes, it does get a little bit annoying. The only workaround I'd found for this is changing the device into large print mode. This makes both the text in the dictionary and the footnotes bigger but it also makes all text anywhere bigger. So it's not a 100% perfect solution, but it works okay. The Kindle on the other hand, I found the dictionary and footnotes to work a lot better. But again, it's quite a minor thing and I, I don't feel it's quite enough to give a point over. All right, so that's all of my categories. Let's take a look at that final score. Mm, okay, a bit of a landslide. As you can tell, I'm a big fan of the Kobo Libre H2O. I think it's a vastly superior device. I do have to talk about costs though, and in the UK these are quite similarly priced. In the US the Kobo is about $40, $50 more expensive, but I still think in both cases the benefits you've got, i.e. the bigger screen, the better ergonomics, the physical page buttons, and the warm light make it just a better device overall because you have the same support in the books, the same performance, so you're really not missing out on much as far as I can see. But of course I would be interested to hear your opinion, whether you think there's some benefits to the Kindle, which I haven't considered. I'd be very interested to hear, so let me know in the comments. But otherwise, I hope this has been a really useful comparison and you've learned something along the way. Subscribe for more to the point content, and I'll hopefully catch you in the next one.